Hi, my name is Olivier Prou, senior producer here at IDOS Montreal. For the past few years, we've had the privilege to work on our version of Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy and reimagine it into a single-player, story-driven, third-person action-adventure game. It's our own fresh take on the Guardians, and something that's really unique to our game is that you get to be Peter Quill. As Star-Lord, you're constantly in the middle of the action as you try to lead this band of misfits. But today, I'm really, really excited to have all of you join us on this journey, and you'll hear more about the game from our team behind this project. Right, let's do this. I've always loved Marvel's cosmic characters. Uh, growing up as a kid, I read them, enjoyed them, loved them. I uh, had the opportunity to write for Marvel on some of their cosmic titles. I went back with the help of Bill Roseman, the editor, and kind of cherry-picked characters from Marvel's past. The opportunity here was to build a team, but to make it all underdogs, so that the reader would think, oh my gosh, how is this team gonna survive? And that became the Guardians of the Galaxy comic, which we loved working on. I remember the first time that the Marvel crew came to Montreal, we were showing them the design of the characters, how they would look, and they stayed silent. I don't know if it's a minute, but in my head it was a minute. I was like, oh my God, like they hate it. We realized how much that Marvel and Adios Montreal share and have in common, and that we knew the Guardians were in perfect hands. Looking at the samples that Adios were kind enough to show me, I think he's fantastic, and absolutely in the spirit of what these characters are. What makes the gameplay experience unique to me is no matter in what phase of the game you are, whether you're in exploration or you're fighting, the Guardians are constantly around you and you never feel alone. While you're the leader, the Guardians will also challenge you and make decisions on their own and you will have to adapt to it. You are literally part of the Guardians of the Galaxy. The decisions you'll make will have lighthearted to hunting repercussions, and the game will react to what you do and say. Come on, no killing teammates! Says who? It's literally in your contract! I made no such commitment. You are playing as Star-Lord, and you're using your blasters, and you're using your jet boots. Star-Lord is really empowering. He's very agile on the battlefield. He can slide and over with his jet boots. Of course, he has his elemental blasters that have different powers as well. And on top of all of this, he can use the unique abilities of his guardians. We're not pirates. We're legally incorporated heroes for hire. Gardeners of the galaxy? What? No! The story is about a group of misfits, the Guardians. In our world, they've been together for less than a year. They create something on a small scale that looks insignificant. And as they progress through the story, they discover that they created something really big that threatens the galaxy. There are a lot of very interesting villains in the Marvel franchise. And when you're starting to work on a story like this, you get to get your pick of which ones will make the best for this story. That gives us the opportunity to bring in some that are well-known, but some that are also not all that well-known. What Ados is getting so right about them is capturing what it's like to be a misfit family. They're also bringing an amazing imagination to it. You're gonna see planets and characters that are gonna blow your mind. Interpreting it in its own way, I think makes it feel incredibly fresh and exciting. It's not a matter of trying to replicate the comic or trying to replicate the film. It's trying to take the medium you're working in and make the best version of Guardians out of that. They made it fun, they made it rock and roll. They delivered everything you would want in a Guardians game. When we first started Star-Lord's uh, design, we were primarily focused on 
getting a feeling of a uh, space pirate look. We researched a long time of that, but eventually on the team, me and uh, other people started having this idea of what if Star-Lord's favorite band when he was a kid was actually named Star-Lord. Everything from then just kind of exploded and we found his obsession with Star-Lord the band, his 80s style, all this explained his design by him putting the patch of his favorite band in his jacket. Sun-Lord, right? It's Star-Lord. We peppered his design with uh, little Easter eggs from the 80s, which with pins on his lapel and of the vinyls from the 80s and the Space Invader icon and his, of course, his Star-Lord pin. I guess the word that would define the design of Star-Lord the most would be space metal. Yeah, <laughs> like rock and roll. <laughs> Storytelling for the design of the Guardians then became really important. Uh, from from Star-Lord then we, we found a bit um, Drax with his tattoos. In our design we actually have a backstory that the, the tattoos uh, are circular in nature and every circle he adds means he won a battle, which also informed the environment of Katath, his home planet, which everything is based on these circle designs, the tombstones, the arches, so all the architecture was then derived from the tattoos. As for Gamora, it was very important. We had to give her a very strong, powerful look. So we came up with the idea of going back a bit to our, what they had done in the comics, and we were really inspired by one of the looks of the black and white armor. We even had little touches of uh, like American fists on all her knuckles, on her feet, which emphasizes that she's ready to punch, kick, kill at any moment. As for Rocket, I'd actually have to say that Rocket uh, was the easiest one to nail to, as a design because he's so upfront in what he likes. He likes explosions, he likes grenades, he likes to tinker. So, of course, we needed to, to put that on his design. We needed him to have his goggles because they're actually gameplay related. We have a goatee that he actually has a little, some beads that looks like Groot because, you know, they're best friends. And then, of course, he has his gun that transforms into his backpack so it's just, it's always ready for action and transform and it, of course the gun is twice his size. Groot was the hardest, weirdly the hardest to nail. We wanted him to have more armor platings and almost feel like he was a big mech. What we came up with is since him and Rocket are best friends, we thought that Rocket should always be customizing Groot in the sense that it's his mech. Therefore, he added an a harness to him so he could grab onto him, stay on him, use him as a turret. And all this is related to gameplay as well. It's not just story. So uh, Groot and Rocket are intertwined as designs. Hi, I'm Steve Shipkowski. I'm the senior audio director on Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. The music, it's definitely infused in the DNA of this game. The Guardians are pretty much a rock and roll band. They are a band of misfits that found each other and have a common goal. With Guardians, the music goes beyond what a normal score and soundtrack would do. It's like rock and roll, man. It's the sights, it's the sounds, it's the smells. The ones who get it, they get it here. Our composer, Richard Jakes, is an amazing, amazing talent. When I heard Richard's theme for the Guardians, which at the time he had just called Hero Theme, that was it. I was done. I wanted this game to feel like a 22-hour film. I wanted it to feel big. You could sit down and watch somebody play and enjoy it as if you were almost watching a movie. Richard's music brings an epicness to this game. When you get into those big battles and you hear the score start mounting up, you almost weep when you hear it because it's just so heartfelt and it's the right notes in the right order playing at the right time and it delivers magic. When we started looking at the licensed tracks, I mean, there's so much music to choose from. Fun was the main factor. It has to bring a smile to your face when you hear it. I think we should hear our group for once. I am we obviously have some rock stuff, but we have a lot of new wave sort of pop stuff as well that was really big in the 80s. I'll be honest, I grew up a huge KISS fan, so being able to put KISS I Love It Loud in the game made me super happy. 
but I also have a huge affection for something like Gary Newman's Cars, which I just find is such a great track and it fits so well. Hot Chocolate, Everybody's a Winner. Amazing song. So if you are a child of the 80s or you have some knowledge of the music in that era, you're gonna love it. All right, let's do this. Let's go sell a monster. We're not seriously flying into that. You say the weather patterns of Seknarf 9 are tied to the temperament of his ruler. So we have this great feature in the game called the huddle. I was looking for a reason to get the music into the game in combat. And this gave me the perfect vehicle to say, what if Peter hits his Walkman Guys, huddle up! and cues up one of his songs and that infuses the team to fight even harder and better. Once you actually saw the Guardians fighting to something like Culture Club or something else where it's like, it's not what you would think as a music that fits with it, it worked so well and people were smiling. The songs definitely had to work in the huddle before anything else. Sunlord, right? It's Starlord. The Starlord band was a very interesting thing. So my creative director, he approached me and he was like, Peter Quill took the name Starlord because in our universe, he loved this band growing up called Starlord. So he goes, what about you spend part of your day writing this rock album? Um, really? <laughs> you know, like how much farther can I go? I wrote some lyrics. We tried writing the first song, which was Space Riders with no names. And I always assumed that I was gonna find another singer to, to do the vocals. But when he heard it, he was like, who's singing? And I said, well, it's me. And he just looked at me and he was shocked. And he's like, that's you. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, okay, we're not changing it. So inside I was like, you know, a little five-year-old kid jumping going, yes, I'm gonna get to sing on this. We wanted to celebrate the Guardians and the whole rock and roll, you know, their dysfunctional family and everything that's, that's around all that. And being able to do an album to support this is like a huge honor and I hope people enjoy the album as much as we enjoyed making it. That's what you get with a space truck and no Bringing the world of Guardians of the Galaxy to life is challenging and exciting in many ways. How do we create a unique version of the Guardians of the Galaxy? I'm not talking just about the characters themselves because they have to look familiar yet original, but how you build the world and how you build an adventure that is worthy of Guardians of the Galaxy. What was really fun for us in building our story is that Marvel said, it's your own take, do your own version. So although we stuck with the characters that the fans of the movies are going to recognize, we were able to envision them in our own universe with our own story. When you start the game, the Guardians are quite, quite a new team. They've been together for about a year. And at that point, they're more like a group of mercenaries than real heroes. It's kind of this awkward band of misfits that grow as a team, they grow as a family, and at the end, they really become the true guardians of the galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy is happening in a futuristic world with spaceships and cities. Ray tracing will give more life to the environment, which is a central part of our game. The usual technique that we use in games is called Screen Space Reflection, or SSR, which uses the information that's currently on screen to reflect, but only what's visible. So what ray tracing enables us to do is have this representation of the entire world, including what's off camera, and then we can put that into the reflection. And this way it gives a lot more life to the environment and keeps us connected. We wanted to make players feel like they're traveling into this fantasy version of space. To have like those poppy colors that put a smile on your face. And every planet or space station, we really wanted to feel unique. We really wanted to embrace the, uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy vibe. We have an environment that's mostly made of glass, glass floors, glass walls, and glass ceilings. And then other environments that we have, all different elements that really RTX is gonna help. I know just in the Milano that we have, we have a lot of metallic doors. When you're facing the door, you can't really see any reflection because the reflection would be from anything that's behind you. But once you enable RTX, 
then you can actually see a little bit more of the environment. It's something that we want to convey throughout the game is that you're there with the Guardians. You know, we're trying to push PC to their limit, so NVIDIA DLSS for us is truly magical. It gives you maximum performance with an increased visual quality, which wouldn't be possible otherwise. I think it's all about kind of immersing you into, into the world and making you feel like, wow, that looks like really insane and everything. It's reflective, it's this, it's that, and to me it's just all about immersion. The story and the game is constantly going in unexpected ways, and in the end it all joins together for what I think will be a very strong emotional experience. I'm very excited for players to embrace our version of the Guardians and immerse themselves into our fresh take on that world. United in the light of belief, all suffering, all grief will end. Um, <laughs> this is really embarrassing. You have a uh, you have something on your face. My what? My name is Daryl Purdy. I am the cinematic and animation director on Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. First, to claim they have captured a Tara Tara. Prove it. Our game is a very narrative-driven action-adventure experience with many larger-than-life characters. We use performance capture as our main tool to bring those characters and story to life. Shooting a complex original story with a large ensemble cast and close to six hours of interactive cinematics was no small feat. Most scenes have at least the five Guardians, and in many cases, other characters from the Marvel Universe, like in this scene with Lady Hellbender. For Lady Hellbender's introduction, it was important to us to play against expectations. What's great is we start to play with those assumptions early in the scene. Star-Lord assumes their monster is superior to the scared, meek little creature ahead of them. However, that meek little monster turns out to be a Tara Tara, a powerful shapeshifter. In response to its rampage, Lady Hellbender defeats the enraged creature with tenderness rather than brute force. In this scene, we wanted to create an overall feeling that things are not always as they seem. Hey there, I'm Star-Lord. Okay. Drax the Destroyer. Here we join the Guardians, led by their self-proclaimed leader, Peter Quill, in an attempt to pull off a con job. Having been arrested and fined, they now owe a considerable amount of credits to Novacor. They devise a plan to sell either Rocket or Groot to Lady Hellbender, an exotic monster collector, as a way to make a quick buck. Once the deal is complete, the Guardians plan to double-cross Lady Hellbender by later sneaking into her fortress and breaking their friend out. Players have the choice to sell Rocket or Groot, and this decision will create different paths in this chapter. And what were you expecting? Perhaps I can do something about it. But, uh, unlikely. We'll see, Destroyer. I can be quite forceful. Peter Quill. I believe she is flirting with me. Humor is also an important ingredient in the Guardians of the Galaxy experience, and flipping expectations helps us with this as well. Star-Lord is the sweet talker, the charmer, the natural negotiator of the team. But Lady Hellbender seems less interested in him and more intrigued with Drax the Destroyer. Drax seems somewhat unsure how to respond to this attention. This sets up another great moment where the player gets to choose. Do you rely on Star-Lord's charm, or do you hand it over to Drax and hope he can leverage Lady Hellbender's interests to the team's benefit? You will have to play the game and decide for yourself to see how the negotiations with Lady Hellbender go. Hey there, hi, uh, I'm Star-Lord. Drax is actually with me, the leader of the Guardians of the Galaxy, you may have heard of us. You? No. Oh, well let me tell you. Now you have. <sighs> Lucky me. Hey, True Believers. This is Bill Roseman, VP and Head of Creative for Marvel Games. Now here to talk about this scene in Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, created by our friends Eidos Montreal and Square Enix. Guardians of the Galaxy. 
Now this scene is really interesting because the Guardians, led by Peter Quill, aka Star-Lord, are meeting and coming face to face with Grand Unifier Raker. He's inspired by a comic book character called Cardinal Raker, who first appeared in Guardians of the Galaxy number two from the 2008 run. That was by writers Dan Abnett, Andy Lanning, and penciler Paul Pelletier, and edited by yours truly. So it's really cool to see Grand Unifier Raker make the leap from comic books to our awesome game. Which we obviously all appreciate. He is the founder and one of the leaders of the Universal Church of Truth. Church also appeared in that Guardians of the Galaxy run in 2008, but their origins actually date back to 1975 when they first appeared in the pages of Strange Tales number 178, created by one Jim Starlin. Universal Church of Truth is this uh, grand institution who uh, want to spread their beliefs throughout the galaxy, and they are actually powered by their faith, powered by their belief system. The matriarch awaits. The game is filled with many more characters, inspired by the decades worth of Guardians of the Galaxy comic books, reinterpreted through the vision of Idols Montreal. You got this, probably.